Hello, everyone. This is John Frausto uh, with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis on Gail Monfi's forehand. A little shout out to uh, Mr. Mahmood. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You actually uh, had asked for an analysis on uh, on Monfi, and uh, I happen to have the video. And uh, so I really appreciate you uh, suggesting that and just appreciate everyone who's been leaving comments and feedback. Uh, that really helps me uh, generate the my you know the newest material. Uh, so please continue to do that. I really uh, welcome your feedback and suggestions. Um, also, a uh, little shout out to Frank Zhao. Uh, you uh, uh, thanked me for correcting the volume. My apologies. Uh, I was able to figure out uh, a little technical error with the mic, and so able to fix that. So hopefully you can hear the audio a lot better moving forward. A little background on, on Monfi. Um, he was born in Paris, France. Uh, he actually resides in, in Switzerland, which was uh, somewhat interesting to me. Maybe he's trying to get a little bit of that Swiss vibe, hopefully like a Rorinka, a Federer would kind of rub off on him and give him a chance to win a, to win a major. Uh, he's been close. He's uh, he's made it to the semifinals of the French Open and U.S. Open, but just has not been able to uh, to get into uh, you know a major final. Uh, he's won six career titles, but as a junior, pretty interesting. He was the number one ranked junior at one point, and uh, he did end up uh, he did win the the French Open, uh, Wimbledon and Wimbledon and Australian junior titles. So. He has tasted the uh, major success, just not at the pro level. Interested in your thoughts? Do you, does he? Uh, do you think he can do it? Um, the, the the guy is an absolute specimen. I, he's probably one of the top five most athletic guys on the tour. He's six foot four, 177 pounds, so he is a presence. Uh, he 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 had said that if he wasn't playing tennis, uh, that he'd love to play in the NBA. And I. You know what? I think he could do it. Uh, he's basically just muscle and tendon. Uh, just an absolute freak on the court. Uh, but can he win the major? And that's the question. Be interested in your comments below. And, um, uh, you know, can he stay healthy? I know that's been another concern. So let's go ahead and look at the videos. Um, you know, it's really interesting. The video on the left, he's actually, he's absorbing. I'm going to just, uh, he's absorbing. Uh, the ball, which means he's going to be backing up. The ball was hit deep. And, uh, you know, so going to be hitting more of a neutral ball in the practice session. The video on the right, he's actually going to be attacking the ball, taking it early. And you're going to see the difference as far as the stroke and uh, the technique and how it is different compared to the video on the left. And, uh, you know, I've always said, and, uh, you know, I think no two strokes are alike. They're like snowflakes. And you're going to see in this video just how how they're different. And uh, just from hitting a million balls, a lot of this is just natural. The thing that you got to remember as a player is the key is you need to get out in court. You need to play matches. You need to practice. And then this starts happening uh, more naturally. Uh, once again, too, I want you to be mindful that, um, you know, the game is a game of, you know, receiving and sending. So, uh, you know, when 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 Monfi receives this ball, he does have intent. He is going to do something with this ball. And you're going to see how the technique does change because of that intent. Uh, he is in, a, you know, the video is pretty good. We shot this video in Cincinnati in 2014. He is in a, um, he is in a semi, uh, semi-Western grip. He does have a strong semi-Western grip. Uh, so he is able with that grip to generate good top spin and able to drive the ball, uh, uh, pretty decent. So, um, so let's go ahead and progress the video. So he's in a semi, semi Western grip. Let's just go ahead and look at the unit term. And, uh, you know, it's interesting the video on the left, right? This video here, uh, notice how he's a little bit more upright cause he's going to be absorbing the ball. Look at the video on the right, how he's almost, in, I call it like a stalking position, almost like a, like a, like a cheetah in the weeds, just ready to attack its prey. Uh, it, it's interesting the difference there as far as the split step and the way he is tracking the ball. The other thing I want you to be mindful of is that I have these two videos are sunk uh, so that um, they're in sync so on contact points. So you're going to see how the, the stroke develops differently according to the ball. So here's the unit turn. One thing I've noticed with uh, with 
with Monfi is just look at the release. So he does release right around three o'clock, like most players. On the, uh, I'm looking at the left video here. Look at how high the hand position is and the racket head. So if I were to put a line, you know, in his shoulder, like through his shoulders, notice how that hand position gets above that line. So he's got a big big swing here and then the other thing is just look at the hand position how high it is above above his head now you're going to see with the contact point how this hand position here will differ compared to this one because of the lower contact point so this ball he's going to attack let's look at the video on the right now let's look at the video on the right he's going to attack look at the hand position here doesn't get much higher above his head. Let's go back in this video here on the video on the left and notice the tracking here. Oh, take it back. Look at how much higher the hand Look at how much higher the hand position is there uh, in compared to the, the video on the right. So um, what I what, basically what I'm trying to tell you is in the video on the right, it's a lower contact point. so the stroke is going to be more compact. All right, so here's the uh, here's the unit turn. Here's the release. Notice the video on the right. He is moving forward and is going to attack. This video is actually backing up a little bit. There's the racket drop right here. He does a nice job too. I've talked about um, not breaking the plane. This racket, when he's taking this racket back, it always stays on the right side of his body. So he does a nice job with that. But just notice the racket angle. See how that racket face is closed here? Um, so that's going to really relax this rotator cuff. He's nice and relaxed, going to generate a lot of racket head speed. Uh, the other thing is let's kind of look at the loading in the knees. Not substantial, a little bit more uprights. Um, we talked about the Fognini video and how... Uh, he's a little bit more upright on his stroke as well, but can generate a lot, a lot of racket head speed. So there's the drop. Let's go ahead and look at the contact point. Let's look at the lag here a little bit. Um, you know, the lag, uh, it's not its not forced. It comes because we relaxed and we really start pulling that racket forward. One other thing that I really wanted to point out here with Monfi is look at the hand. Oops, going to go back one. Look at how much he chokes up on that on that grip. You can see how you can see some of his palm here. He really does uh, kind of use that racket as a lever, and uh, that racket grip is it slid fairly you know high up in his hand. So you can see a lot of the uh, the hand uh, in, in that in that shot. So he doesn't uh, really choke up on the racket maybe more as as much as some other players. So. Another thing that just allows for a little bit more leverage, a little more lag with the racket. So here he goes. He starts pulling to the ball. And look at the contact point. This is beautiful because we did shoot this at 240 frames per second. Look at the contact point. Now here's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, we really do have four four zones when you we make contact. We have zone four, which is above the shoulders, zone three, which is shoulder to waist, zone two, which is waist high to knee high, and then you have zone one, which is knee to to foot. So in the video on the left, he's hitting right around waist high, right? He's at he's at waist high with this stroke. So he's let's say he's in zone three. The video on the right, you know, he's hitting below his knees. So he's going to be in zone one here. Now, here's what I want you to watch. So we're in we're in two different zones with the contact point, correct? Now, Monfi does hit with a, it looks like a straight arm position. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Does that look like a straight arm position to you? But with the contact point, notice the racket angle. See how it's closed here a little more in that? And then here it's a little bit more square. Do you guys understand why that's happening? You know, when the ball, when you're receiving a ball in zone one, in video one, right, you're going to have to lift that ball a little more. You're going to have to get some clearance because it's below the net. So the racket angle will naturally open up a little more. But when you're hitting here um, in zone three, that face is probably going to close a little bit more. 
right? Because it's above the net, you're not having to lift the ball as much. I don't know if that makes sense. If you have questions or any comments, please put those down below. But uh, he does a nice job. He's finding that ball out in front. Notice how his hips and shoulders are facing to the target. And then the other thing, the big thing here is just notice Monfi's uh, court position where he's taking that ball early and, uh, and he's looking to attack. Uh, attack with the with the shot so that's the intent he wants to attack he's attacking and in, 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 he's attacking in this video he's hitting more of a neutral ball in, in that video all right so here's the real interesting we're going to look at the follow through in both videos and i want you to see the difference here this is really really interesting watch the follow through Now, this is really cool, really, really cool. All right, so here, here's the big difference. Look at the rotation he's gotten with his hips and shoulders. Notice how we can see his back. Notice in this video where he's still facing forward. So what he's done is he's able to generate power and pace because he's went forward, and then he gets the spin. He gets the spin from just hitting this windshield wiper. Look at how, watch again in the video on the right, how he hits. And then look at the kind of the windshield wiper finishing across the hip. So the hips and shoulders don't have to open up as much. That's my thought. One thing I do want to let you guys know, I've been teaching for over 25 years. I feel like I know the game fairly well, but I don't know it all. There's a lot of people out there a lot smarter than I am in the comment section below. Why do you think this happened? Um, so, Look at the finish, how he lands on that front foot, you know, all natural. Here is an open stance, catches the racket with the non-hitting hand, great rotation, great balance. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you, um, uh, you know, contributing comments and some of your feedback. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button below. If you really, really like the video, please share it with your friends, family, coaches, players. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below to get my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching.